Alright guys, like I said, welcome back to the bunker. Uh, really appreciate you coming to my channel. I think there's a lot here that's entertaining. At least it is to me, and really that's why I'm here, to entertain myself. So, we all know there's a great boogaloo on the horizon, and I think it's time for us to, you know, just for fun, let's play with the idea of what guns we should consider for this boogaloo. If you want to hear the politics of the boogaloo, go to my other channel. That is my strictly political channel. So go to Tucker Blackstone, the state soldier, and check out those videos for the politics. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for the gun stuff. Now, before I get started, I want to say this. This is strictly an imaginary exercise. We are not here to in any way suggest that we should go to war with the government. I'm not trying to start a civil war here. I am not fantasizing about civil war. What I'm trying to do is, you know, this is sort of an entertainment. You know, this is sort of the boogaloo fantasy, like the video games kind of thing where you're not really trying to start trouble or become violent. You're actually just entertaining, you know, thoughts of, of war. Look, mankind are warriors. That's what we are. We are all warriors. Whether you like it or not, you fight your own wars every single day. Some of us enjoy the cool toys and neat stuff that we, you know, that are used for wars, and we like to fantasize about how we would do it if we were in that situation. But again, I am not inciting civil war. That is not what this is. I am not suggesting anybody ever fire on a law enforcement officer or a military officer or anybody else in the military. I am saying, you know, in the fantasy world, in this imaginary scenario, this is how I think it should work. Okay, you follow? You dig? You tracking? Good, let's go. So, to establish a scenario, okay, so that we're not, you know, ambiguous about anything. The war has already begun, but only just. We're only a few days or weeks into the Civil War. So we did not start the war. We are not the reason it happened. But there has been a Civil War. And that Civil War has broken down into two major factions. Three, if you really think about it. There's the centrists who don't want anything to do with it, which is going to be most people. Most people aren't going to want to get involved in a war for a lot of reasons, right? Uh, at worst, they're just going to be the narcs. They're going to be the people who tell on you <laughs> or tell on the government, but otherwise. Uh, now, the two big fighting factions are going to be the government alliance, the government, those who are, you know, enforcing their will upon us, and the, uh, the, the rebels, Right? So we're the rebels in this case. We're, we're the rebels and we're fighting the, uh, the evil empire. Okay? So the evil empire is made up of government with government funded weapons and toys and tools and tactics. Okay? So our goal here is to combat our government as, as it has become tyrannical and, and taken our rights from us. Okay? So that's our scenario. Um, to understand the players in this, you have to know, and again, I discuss this more on my political channel, but it's something you have to consider. You have to know that the U.S. government is not going to fight a war against us without outside help. You know, you know as well as I do that all the NATO states, all the NATO countries, as you like to call them, will join our U.S. military in enforcing law on us, and that law is going to be as tyrannical as it is everywhere else in the world. So it's going to, now you're looking at the belligerence being the United States government along with NATO countries against, well, we're not going to be alone either. There are entirely too many things in this country that uh, have value to other people on the outside. So they're not going to just stand back and watch, you know, the NATO alliance overtake everything in the U.S. You know, China, Mexico, and, and all these other governments would be very interested in getting their hands on a lot of what's going on. So just as we have gotten in bed with some really bad people like uh, Afghanistan during, you know, the Afghan-Russian war, um, you know, we don't believe the things that Afghanistan believes, but we needed them to be the antagonist against Russia, right? So I'm saying that's what's going to happen here. If we get into this war, then we are going to have other countries who may not believe in our freedom or be concerned with our victory in terms of us winning, but they will help us uh, combat the, uh, the encroaching you know, European-style government, and, and the point will be for them to 
as we did with Russia, mire them in war. So we will get support. So that all being understood, whether you like it or not, it's irrelevant. We're going to go with that scenario. Now, what guns would you want? Well, there are some people who've made some pretty good arguments for a handgun, right? And, and I don't think we're going to get into caliber until the end of this, but let's just say in general, a handgun. Um, you know, the advantages of the handgun is it's small, it's compact, you can hide it. Now, in this situation, again, a lot of your neighbors may not be very keen on the idea that you're fighting a war, so they're liable to, if they see you carrying around rifles, uh, you know, call the authorities. Hey, this guy's got a weapon. He's coming to fight his resistance against you. You know, that's that's what happened in places like, you know, Germany and Russia and, and other places where civil war turned into world war. Um, so there is a legitimate argument for handguns. Except that, you know, practicality in terms of what you can actually do in inflicting harm. Um, chances are, if you're fighting against the government, you're going to be fighting against people who are, you know, wearing armor, who are built for battle, who are prepared <laughs> to overcome handguns. They're not going to be close enough for you to do any harm with a handgun. So that's something to consider. So to be honest, in my opinion, in this scenario, the handgun is a good sidearm something to have with you for you know crazy situations but in terms of combat effectiveness it is not what you want to be focusing your weight on weight being what you're going to carry yeah you could carry a lot of magazines and a lot of rounds with a handgun but they're not effective enough so we're talking about you know mobility versus firepower right so in mobility versus firepower you have excellent mobility but very limited firepower so let's get away from the handguns, okay? The next thing you want to talk about is shotguns. Now, if you're staying home and you're defending your home from, I don't know, like renegades, non-military combatants, but just, you know, all the different uh, roving groups that are going to go around taking advantage of the conflict, a, a shotgun's a really good answer. I mean, let's face it, a 12-gauge to the chest, whether you're wearing body armor or not, is going to stop you at least long enough to make everybody else reconsider what they're doing. So if somebody's trying to get into your home and they're trying to cause harm to you, then the, the 12 gauge will be a good weapon. But we're going back into firepower versus mobility. You know, a, a pack of 12 gauge rounds is a lot harder to carry. For example, I'm gonna hold one of these guys up. Now I just grabbed the one on top. Um, you know, this box of rounds is less rounds than these magazines right and these magazines are going to be a lot easier to carry a lot easier so is it practical to go to war with boxes of 12 gauge ammo and to have to reload even if you have a you know high capacity 12 gauge magazine or tube or whatever um is it really practical to go to war with something like this well you know, I probably should have started this by saying any gun's better than no gun, so whatever gun you have is the right gun. But if you were choosing, <laughs> this is probably not your best choice. So let me put the 12 gauge back in the hole. And even if you're using the zombie rounds, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's a zombie round. Even if you're using zombie rounds, shotguns probably not the most combat effective gun to carry uh so let's get away from that now i'm gonna throw this in here real quick i want you to consider that if we're talking about you as a part of a team which eventually is good, what's going to happen there is an argument for a team member carrying shotguns there's definitely an argument for that right give me a shotgun and some some slugs you know or some rifled slugs or whatever and and put that on the team on the fire team you got something you got some hella punch <laughs> and even in, like i said if you're wearing body armor and a 12 gauge slug hits you even if it does not penetrate the armor that dude is out of the fight <laughs> he's done so that's something to consider but as a general go to war weapon i'm gonna say that the shotgun is not ideal okay so now we're getting into other guns. This is the fun stuff. This is what you're here for, right? So the AR-15, I think there's one somewhere over my head back here. Uh, the AR-15, as it is standard. When I say that, I mean the 5.56 slash 2.23 AR-15. There's a good one. Now, I have had a lot of people argue that that is the perfect weapon for war because it's what you know, our government carries. It's a NATO round. It's easy to find. There's lots of it. Yes, for the moment, it is easy to find. There's lots of it. I have thousands of rounds of, of 223 and 556 myself. 
but uh, you're not going to carry thousands of rounds. And there's there's some caveats here you have to think about. The first being that the 223, when it comes to military body armor, is yeah, not so effective. I mean, it is a pea shooter. I, I know, I know you're going to get angry here because the people who swear by it, swear by it, and they don't care what the facts are. But the reality is, is that the little 22 caliber, you know, 5.56, is not a an effective uh, penetrating round when it comes to real body armor. I don't think there's really a very effective round. I mean, there are some that are, and, and I know you're saying, well, the lo level one, whatever body armor. No, I'm talking about what the military wears. You, if you're penetrating plates with 223, I'm impressed. I mean, I have shot them with these green tips, the LAPs, the light armor piercing, and had <laughs> no luck getting through the plates. So, and even at that, when they do hit the plates, they don't hit like some other rounds do. If I'm getting hit by a 223 in the plate, it's going to hurt, but it's not a slug. It's not a 12-gauge slug hitting me in the plate. It'll go through less, but it imparts a lot more energy. So there's, there's, eh, I got to tell you, from that aspect, from the actual combat effectiveness of the 223 within battle ranges, you know, we've seen in the Middle East that that's not so good. It's really not, it's not bad. It's not an awful round, and I would definitely take it to war. But if I'm fighting against a, a military like ours, so you have to understand, when you think about Afghanistan, you're thinking about U.S. troops using a 5.56 against, you know, people in, in, in robes, <laughs> okay? What I'm talking about is reverse that. How well would the guys in robes have done against the U.S. troops if they were shooting 5.56 at the U.S. troops? They wouldn't have done well at all because all that body armor would have stopped it. So, no, I don't think the 5.56-223 is ideal for going to war in the scenario that we've described. Here comes the hate mail. Oh, I can, oh, I can hear you just, that's ah, crap. These are the best rounds ever made. The wars are this, that, whatever. It's not, not going to work. You're not going to sell me on that because I've been doing this for way too long. For real, not on the internet, okay? <laughs> I actually shoot for a living. Uh, so, no, don't try and sell me that that's the right thing. Now, there are AR-15s that are chambered in better rounds. Well, better for this application. Uh, I have seen what a 6.5 Grendel can do to armor, and it's pretty impressive it is way more impressive than i've ever seen from a 223 so if you're going to argue that ar-15 is the good weapon because my ar-15 is a 458 socom or my my ar-15 is a 500 you know or my ar-15 is a 6.5 okay all right all right so that's why I said as a standard round when I said the AR-15. Now, yes, there are some AR-15s that in terms of combat effectiveness are way better than the 223, 556. So you have an argument, but here's where that argument falls apart. Number one, you're, uh, you have to have all the ammo you're ever gonna use. If you're gonna use a Wildcat or obscure round like that, which is relatively obscure, there's not that many out there that are shooting any of those. And yes, I have several boxes. Uh, I have several thousand rounds of 6.5 Grendel because I do have one, uh, but that's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough because I may not be able to carry that with me. These things are heavy, man. These things are very heavy, and I'm not going to be carrying three boxes of ammo along with all my bug out gear and all my weapons. And all. It's just not going to happen. So now where does that leave us, right? Um, the other thing that you have to consider is, you know, while that is obscure, even the 5.56 is going to be our enemy's round. It's what the government carries. But when I said that we were likely to get help, do you think we're gonna get help from NATO uh, countries, NATO militaries, who will supply us with more 5.56-223 Air 15 style platform guns? I don't, I don't think that's what we're gonna get. I think what we are more likely to see are other, you know, antagonistic countries, Russia, China, uh, South America, you know, almost any other country who's not going to come to defense of the government is going to be supplying us with AK-47s, right, 
So if you have your AK-47 and you need ammo resupply, the people who are going to be facilitating that are going to be resupplying you with 762 by 39 Exactly. So that makes for a better argument. Plus, let's be honest. I mean, yes, the debate is never ending. But when it comes to fighting somebody who's wearing body armor, I don't think anybody's going to say that you do better with a 5.56 than a 7.62. I don't. I, I honestly don't. Th Anybody who's ever shot at body armor <laughs> and watched it fall off the table or, you know, penetrate the human, whichever you're doing, or knock down the human, will not argue <laughs> that, that 2.23 is better than 5.56 when engaging with someone with body armor. It's just not. So whatever the arguments, and again, here comes the hate mail. I know you guys are going to be pissed. Let's live with it, dude. Get out there and try it. Get, show me. Don't tell me I'm wrong. Make a video and show me that your 223 is more effective in combat than against an armored adversary than a 7.62x39 or better. And now that brings us to the next thing, right? So I do think that the AK is a better option. Probably maybe in the top two options for going up against the U.S. military uh, than the AR-15 as it is standard you know, chamber. So what is better than that? Well, I would argue a 308. Why would I argue that? I know. Uh, it's a tight argument. It's hard to argue that a 308 is going to do better than a 762 because of size and weight constraints, because of mobility versus firepower, you know, because your AK is going to carry more rounds with less weight than, you know, the, the 762 by 51, the 308. Yeah, that, there's a good argument there, and I'll hear that argument, okay? I'll hear the argument that the AK is better. And again, like I said, resupply is going to be more likely from, you know, a, a Soviet bloc, former Soviet bloc, uh, you know, ammo supplier, Chinese, Russian, whatever, uh, com bloc is what I meant to say. So you could argue that. Now, the reason I do argue for, say, like an M14 platform or even an AR-10 is that uh, the 308? When you hit body armor with a 308, it, uh, dude, it's like getting hit by Mike Tyson. It is brutal. It is very brutal. It is way more brutal than anything a 223, 556, or even an AK round, a 762 by 39. That 308 thumping you is brutal, and it will take you out of the fight, whether it penetrates the armor or not it will take you out of the fight at least long enough for everybody else to see you hit the ground and go, oh, wow, our body armor is not magic. It's not going to stop people. That's the goal, right, is to scare them. <laughs> I mean, you can't shoot all of them. But if you shoot enough and put them on the ground quickly enough that the rest see that. You know, I had a sniper friend once tell me, you know, I was, uh, I, anyway, I had a sniper friend once tell me that, you know, even though they only carried, you know, five rounds, 10 rounds at the most, um, there's nothing that dissuades the enemy more than when charging you, seeing one of their friend's heads explode and their eyeball land on your cheek, right? If you're running into battle and your buddy's eyeball goes against your face, <laughs> That has a tremendous mental effect on you. You look back and there's a lifeless body with a banana split where his head used to be. You're going to take cover. <laughs> You're going to think about that. And so it doesn't take as many rounds. And that's the argument for the 308. Now, do I prefer the like M14, M1A platform over the AR-10 platform? Yeah, I do. I do, and the biggest reason is I've had both, and I, I have found, you know, I've, I've shot with a lot of people, and I've watched it happen, but I found that the AR-10 platform is harder to maintain than the M1A platform, right? So your, your old school heavy M1As, which, you know, going back to size and weight constraints, are a problem. They're heavy. They're very heavy. They're not comfortable. They're ergonomically crappy. 
but they run and they run and they run <laughs> and you can feed any kind of thing you pick up ammo off the ground it's all dirty throw it in there and shoot it and it will run most of the time a relatively cheap one will outperform a relatively cheap ar-10 now i had an armor light ar-10 that never failed no matter what i did to it it never failed so i'm not saying that it's 100 percent all the time so don't start this i am saying that generally if i had to choose between one and the other it would be the m1a It'd be like the socom at minimum but i like the longer barrel because i don't know i like velocity uh so that's something to consider um now you know again being able to switch out magazines in the AR-10 is a lot more, a uh, lot smoother, a lot more practical. You know, it's a lot better ergonomics. But in the long run, I like performance. Dude, you're not gonna be able to stop and get, you know, a new bolt. <laughs> you're not gonna be able to stop and, and change things that have broken or that aren't working. And look, the AR platform breaks. If you don't believe that, you haven't shot enough because the AR platform is a bad design. Here it comes. Oh my God, I'm getting bombarded with hate mail. I don't care <laughs> because I have done so much of this that I've watched. I mean, you've got some of these really famous and really good tactical instructors who, when they send you the paperwork, they tell you bring an extra bolt for your AR-15s because your bolt's gonna break. Yeah, that's pretty standard. <laughs> it is. So if you think that's the best way to go, that's fine. Just make sure you bring your parts for your, you know, little Honda gun. <laughs> oh, that's going to get me killed. So anyway, the point is, uh, yeah, in, in the long run, I'm going to go with either that or the AK, AK platform. Now, again, the AK has a strong argument in that it will be supplied by, you know, the people who will be helping us. So that's kind of, that, that's where I'm coming from. What do you guys think? You think I'm wrong? You think I'm crazy? Throw it at me. We can extend this discussion more as uh, I start seeing comments come in, but I think this is a good start. So you guys, hey, you have a happy new year, okay? Make sure you get out there and enjoy yourself, and for God's sake, do not shoot your gun in the air to celebrate happy new year, because that's stupid. Oh, all right, guys. Thanks a lot. I love you. Okay.